Hi, we're here with Gene Baker. Here we are, we're at the shop, we've got dogs, we've got equipment. First of all, Gene, how did you get into this crazy business? I uh, couldn't afford to buy that Les Paul on the window. Is that it? That's basically it. You started in wood shop in high school? Junior high school, seventh grade. Did you build a guitar there? I built a guitar and I smashed it on Halloween. How did you end up in the professional guitar building business? I know you worked for Fender, you worked for Gibson. I had to move to California first and foremost. You know, I was born and raised in Detroit. And you couldn't help that. Yeah, there wasn't a whole lot going on back there besides getting in trouble. So I got out of, I got out of Michigan, came to California. Work uh, police program or just? Uh, almost, could have been. Yeah, scary. But uh, from there, Woodchuck took over. Uh, right. Bands took over. Right. My so you was ruined. So you ended up working for which company first, Fender or Gibson? Uh, actually, for Gibson first. But before that, it was the Mean Gene Shop. So that was mean. even scarier. So you were doing your own thing first. Yeah, I didn't have a clue. Were the guitars called Baker at that time? Uh, or mean Gene. They were called Mean Gene guitars. They're official. They're dubbed in Alabama, actually, Huntsville, Alabama. After that, you got the gig at Gibson based on your Mean Gene experience. Yep. Yeah, me and Roger Giffen, my first mentor in life. Of so how was Gibson? Was that, was that a fun yeah, job? Did you learn? Of, oh, man, I learned so much from Roger because we were a, a custom shop. We were also a repair shop. So we worked on anything. It didn't have to be a Gibson. It could be a Rickenbacker or a Martin. So then, then there was a thing at Fender. There were so many cool people there. And you learned things. Oh, I learned so many things. Yeah. From who? Yeah. Who would you work with that you liked? Uh, Jay Black and John Page were the stars. You know, Fender wanted us to put our decals, the master builder decals on, you know, models, but having more apprentice help, mm -hmm. you know, kind of like starting your own little shop. So I figured, man, if I'm going to do that, I'd rather go start my own shop and do my own thing. And you did. And that's exactly what we did. So after that, was it B3? Yep. Built by Baker. It was Cliff Culturary from Destroy All Guitars. And so here we are now, and what that brings us to is this relationship with a company called PBG, which would include you and a bunch of other amazing builders working together and then and this man is like you know without a doubt I mean, even even master builders like you know roger giffen say that this man here is the the cnc champion of the world it's like he knows how to knows how to run those machines and make the bodies turn out great the necks turn out great gene's guitars are flawless they're extremely tight and very very well made i've, I've always enjoyed gene's work thank you gene if there were a couple of things that you would like people to know about the way you design guitars that, that don't just get it from looking, uh -huh. what, what would a couple of things be that really, you know, turn you on about guitar building that you don't usually just get by looking? Is there, is there something that you put into this that you want people to know about that they don't get? God, there, there's so much that you can't even touch and see that it's beyond words in so many ways. Everything from hand selecting the lumber to just uh, the thought process be between how you even select that lumber for what type of model is, solid body or hollow body, right. and uh, grain directions, and uh, just so much. But what direction do you like the grain to go on a body? If the body, if the neck's here and the body's this way, is it, is it, is it vertical or horizontal grain? You know, I like a lot of quarter sawn in the necks. We use a lot of slaps on in the bodies, but anything to send the tone in a new direction. Uh, a lot of guys, a lot of people out there, you know, guys, girls, they, they don't realize that these builders go to such great lengths to try to find the right wood for every guitar. You know, and uh, that's, that's part of what makes Gene's instrument so special is that he's able to, to, to find the right woods, right weight of woods, to really try to make people's guitars sustain and, and have the properties that we all want in a great guitar. Like even the guys today were chopping up all the raw lumber and so we, we once we get it chopped into a billet, we'll weigh it, we'll categorize it for like grain quality, for weight quality, so we can assign it to the right model so you don't end up, nobody wants to play a brick. Gene is about to, uh, to like really jump in here and uh, be a part of something really big. There's gonna be how many different guitar models built by you in this factory? I think we got a, you mean just under the B3 brand or? No, it's PBG brand. Oh God, I think we're looking at seven models already between all the, the right. accumulated master miners. Well, I think in my mind, the, the, the greatest thing about the way this is going down is that a guy will be able to walk into a store more readily, pick up a B3 that he might not have seen in the store before, if you had to name one thing that is the biggest turn on for you about making guitars, what would that be? 
Oh, I get a clam. <laughs> <laughs>